So I'm trying to switch from y equals mx plus b back to standard form this time, okay? Um, so to do that, you'll notice there's nothing on the right side. So that's, I'm just going to shift, it's the exact opposite we just did. I'm just trying to get everything onto the left side instead this time. And you'll remember there are a couple rules. Okay, a couple of rules for standard form. One, uh, no fractions. And two, uh, A can't be negative. Okay? So those are your two rules for standard form. And so you can just deal with those when they come up. Um, but first things first, before you even think about applying, like, making sure that you've abided by these rules for standard form, I think the first thing you need to do is get everything to one side. Okay, and just do that with zero pairs again. Okay, so just go, okay, I'm going to, uh, Y's on the left, that's good, I suppose. Some of you, uh, in my immediate thing, my immediate thought there was to like grab two things and move them. What's the problem with that? Like if I got everything on the left, what's what's the problem with getting everything on the left? I'd have to create two zero pairs, right? I'd have to go minus 2x plus 9, minus 2x plus 9. You could do that, but what's you run the risk of making a sign error, right? I think the more work you do, you run the risk of getting making a sign error. So what's what's the other option? You don't have to move two things. All I said is you have to get everything onto one side of an equal sign. It doesn't matter if it's the left side or the right side. So why wouldn't you just take those lonesome y and take a y away from both sides? Okay. Now you've only done one thing. And you're going to now have what? what's a, a y take away a y. Well, that's a zero pair. Now you're going to get zero equals. You're going to get 2x. Remember the y by comes next, so I'm going to go minus um, y minus 9. Have I broken any of the rules for standard form? I don't, I don't see any fractions, and a is not negative, so we're good. Okay, that, that's it. Now, if you really wanted to, you could say, okay, A is 2, B is equal to negative 1, and C is equal to negative 9. You could do that, okay, just so we're all perfectly clear as to what's what, right? Because we're going to go 0 equals, oops. Okay. We good? Is that the answer? I think so, eh? We'll do e, uh, is it C for this question? C's a little harder. Okay, this is definitely harder. All right, let me, uh, I'm gonna take some space for this one. This isn't working very well. It won't let me copy it. Okay, I'm going to add a page below, and we'll be good to go here. All right, so we're going to do 3C here. Okay, now here's the problem. you got some fractions, and you know the fractions are going to be a problem because you're not allowed to have them for factor or for a standard form, right? So... What could you possibly do to get rid of the fractions? What, remember, when you see fraction or hear the word fraction, you, that's, that's synonymous with an order of operation. Declan? Divide. You're dividing. So to get rid of division, what would you have to do? Sama? Multiply. Then multiply by what? I gotta teach you two tricks here. Aaron? Yes, okay, Aaron knows the Aaron knows the easy way. 
the really easy, the, the, the fastest way. But we might not all know why it's 15. Okay, so here's what I'm going to show you. So you all know, because we've done this already, if I just had a fraction like 4 over 5, like what I have there, and I multiplied everything by 5, I did that yesterday, right? Multiplying by 5 is only going to take care of one of the fractions. Would everybody agree? Because when you multiply this by 5, everything, you're going to get this. 5y is equal to 5 times 4 divided by 5, x plus 5 times 2 divided by 3. Would everybody agree? Every single thing has been multiplied by 5. Would everybody agree? Okay. And remember, if I multiply by 5, what am I doing? I'm multiplying top times top times top, right? And bottoms, bottom, bottom. Okay, it's just one across the whole bottom, so there's nothing really going on there. Okay? So that's what you've got. Now you could do you could do the work on this, and you're gonna see what? 5y is equal to, oh, 5 times 4 is 20, and 20 divided by 5 is what? What's that? Yes? Four. Four. Well, this is why, remember you guys, I showed you five times four is 20 divided by five is four. Well, why can't you just go like this? That's why we did that. We strategically picked a number that would cancel out the denominator and multiplied by it. Okay, but the problem is, so we're going to get 4x here, but what's the problem with the next one? Can you cancel a 5 with a 3? No. So you're going to be stuck here. Look. You're going to be left with uh, 10 over 3. Now the problem is you're not allowed to have fraction. We haven't dealt with the second fraction. So what are you going to do now? You're going to have to multiply this one by... 3 to deal with that 3 in the denominator there, the whole thing. So now you're going to get this. 3 times 5y is equal to 3 times 4x plus 3 times 10 divided by 3. So you're going to get 15y is equal to 12x. What happens to these 3s? They knock each other out. Okay, and then so you'd be left with just plus 10. Okay, now before I finish off this question, I want to show you what happens. Well, what did we just do? We multiplied by 5, and then I multiplied by 3. So why wouldn't you just be smart from the beginning and multiply by... 5 times 3. Watch what happens if I do that. If I take this whole thing and multiply by, sorry, multiply by 15, watch what happens. I'm going to get 15 times y is equal to 15 times 4 divided by 5 plus 15 times 2 divided by 3. What happens? Now you can simplify all this, right? We did this way back in the first unit. 15 and 5 you can reduce. 15 and 3 you can reduce. What are you going to get? 15y is equal to, what's 15 divided by 5? Sorry, I missed an x. 15 divided by 5 is what? Yeah. 3, so now I'm going to get 3 times 4, x, plus what's 15 divided by 3? 5 times 2. Now clean it up. Are those not the, two, the exact same thing? 
So you can be smart. You can do less work by identifying. If you're going to deal with both frac like both denominators, just multiply them to like find what they go into first. So if three and five went into fifteen, and then multiply everything by fifteen, just in one step. Save yourself having to deal with two fractions individually and all the cleanup and all that. Just figure out what you can multiply by one number and just wipe them out. Okay? Now, we still have to finish this question off because the question remembers asking us to write it like this. Okay, and I'm not there. Not everything's organized. Right? But same thing. Why can't you? I think the smart thing to do would just to be take 15y away from both sides, right? Only do one order of operation or one, one, uh, one thing instead of having to do two and save yourself a little possibility of making an error. Okay, so let's just take away 15y from both sides and now you're gonna get a zero pair there and you're gonna be left with 12x, sorry, I'll move that up so you can see it, 12x um, minus 15y plus 10 equals zero, and you're done. Am I right, Opal? Am I get the right answer? Like magic. Okay. 